If you have or suspect you may have a health problem, or if you require answers to specific health care questions or concerns, you should consult your physician or health care provider and not depend solely on information presented in this program. Hello, I'm Dr. Steve Garner and welcome to Ask the Doctor. It's great to be with you today. This is our 17th season and as you know, this program was created to assist you in understanding medical issues so you can take charge of your own health. It's more important than ever to become an informed patient and we're here to bring you timely health discussions. Now for those who are new to the show, there are two ways to get your questions in. First, you can call the live phone line at 718-499-6101. Second, you can email questions to askthedoctor at netny.net and we'll bring them into discussion. And we have a tremendous show for you tonight. Look, what do you see what we have here tonight? Now, for this episode, we have Dr. Philippa Cheatham. She's a urologist at Columbia University Medical Center. You've seen her on all the TV shows and radio, and we'll talk about her in a little while. And one of my favorite guests, Dr. Michael Abbott, internal medicine, pulmonary medicine, geriatrics, and he's an attending at the New York Methodist Hospital. Welcome to both of you, and we'll get to you in a little while. We have our on-air assistant, um, Kirsten Elizabeth. Kirsten, give a shout out to you. Oh, you sure. say hello. A shout out. Well, hi. Yeah. First of all, hi, Dr. Garner. Good mm. to see you. I'll give a shout out to my husband, too. Why not? Hi, Steve. <laughs> you feel a little rested? I do feel rested now after the she was jet on a lag. Last week. But, uh, you know, now I'm, I'm on a cleanse. I'm doing a juice cleanse this week. Oh, that's all right. Maybe so don't give us too much detail about that. I'm rested, but I'm hungry. Has anybody heard of the juice cleanse? <laughs> I think there's plenty of uh, juice cleanses out there. Oh. <laughs> there's probably a million of those. Yes. <laughs> but that goes naturally, it goes via the mouth? Oh, yeah. I okay. just juice okay. everything. Just everything. Okay. And I drink it. All right. And, is, and the end point is? Five days. Five I'm days? I'm done. Going Beautiful. back to eating french fries. Beautiful. What do you, you get? A little orange juice in there? A little just a little. All Carrot, right, spinach, nice. everything. Very nice. So uh, we'll keep posted on that. We'll see you next week. How you doing? <laughs> Perfect. And before we get to the news, let me remind you, the number is 718-499-6101. I see there was somebody on, uh, you know, last week we had a little trouble with the phones, but this week we're back to square one. No. Okay, here we go. <laughs> so tonight's topics are urology, internal medicine, geriatric medicine, and lung disease. You can also email your questions to ask the doctor at netny.net. Now in the news. What do you think of that transition? That is overwhelming. Um, in the news, and then I, I've searched the news to find the most interesting stories. The first one, a bra may be able to detect cancer, which is um, breast cancer, I hope. And it, uh, what, the way it does it is it has sensors in it that detect heat. And apparently certain cancers give off uh, increased heat levels up to seven years before something might show in a mammogram. And your doctor holds the results. So as the temperature goes up, your doctor gets a printout. And you can, the, the study wasn't that large. It only dealt with about 67 women. But it was kind of interesting that it was accurate. It was actually the mammogram itself is only about 70% accurate in picking up tumors. This, though, is an early warning system. It's not so much as the diagnostic tool, but to know when there's a change brewing. So it's something that's interesting. What do you think of that, Philippa? Well, I'm just wondering whether it's possible to design a pair of boxer shorts that can detect testicular uh -huh. cancer or prostate that cancer. That would be interesting. Maybe there's a, a, a theme there that somebody would want to pick up that idea for a new invention. Yeah. Who knows? You have the husband and wife that you know, you have <laughs> Maybe. set up sparks. It would be a good Christmas present, wouldn't it? Uh, I idea. like that. I like that a lot. Yeah, yeah. Now, this is up your alley. Green tea and prostate cancer. I don't know if you saw that study. It wasn't a very large study, but it showed that green tea had the effect of reducing inflammation it, um, in people who were already diagnosed with cancer who were going for surgery, and they, they fed them green tea. Green tea is very rich uh -huh. in antioxidants, uh -huh. and it definitely has a role in being prostate cancer protective. So green tea, we support that, absolutely. Right, so we'll see how that, that was an interesting study. Um, should people be out there dr drinking green tea? They should, and I would advise patients to go for the decaffeinated green tea. The study showed that if you drink four to five cups mm -hmm. of green tea, then that can be not only prostate cancer protective and prevent developing prostate cancer, but it can also help reduce recurrence in those yeah. patients that have had prostate cancer and been treated. Excellent. Very good. Now, this was a bizarre story, I thought. A boy who carries the gene for cystic fibrosis, the gene, was kicked out of school. 
because there were two other kids in the school with cystic fibrosis and there was a fear that this, this kid comes down with some weird bacteria that he's going to give it to those two kids. I don't know, it sounds a little weird, Mike. It is weird, and um, I, I don't think it holds any water at all. Uh, it's very hard to give germs or, or project germs onto somebody else with uh, cystic fibrosis. And I, I got a question, these parents in, in California may explain it, why they're writing down in the kid's um, form some genetic details that would never come out, that they did some genetic analysis and found that he had genes that might contribute to cystic fibrosis down the road. What parent writes that? First of all, in the form, I don't think there's a space to fill in if you have any genetic problems mm -hmm. that haven't shown up mm -hmm. yet, right? Interesting. So yeah. you wonder about that. So anyway, parents out there, don't rush. These tests can be scary. These, you know, there are a lot of people sending out their genome analysis for a thousand bucks and to come back or even less, and now you, you run into problems. Yeah. That's Insurance right. company. That's right. So anyway, and then finally, problems with the soap pod. Do you know what the soap pod, not the iPod, the soap pod? It comes in the detergent bottles. They're single dose, and they're beautiful colors, turquoise, red, a cherry, and the kid thinks that it's uh, candy. Ugh. And they've already been... I think like 108 kids that have, have been felled by this, four put on respirators. It's very toxic stuff in the quantity they take. So the, they're trying to redesign the boxes now so the pods won't look so attractive. But for parents, be on the lookout because that's very scary. Yeah. And the biggest group was those under six, six years of age. So that was kind of a weird story in the, in the news. Um, but you don't think yeah. about those things. Yeah, I mean, you, you, when you, you buy laundry detergent, you sometimes forget it looks like candy to a kid, so it's good to know. I don't know why they do that. We've had that with other products, too, where they make it look like candy for the kids, and they mm -hmm. swallow it and so on. Uh, Kirsten, can you tell us the quiz? We do. We're going to switch it up a little with this quiz, okay? So the first quiz question today is, Frankie Valley is currently on Broadway this month singing his greatest hits with the Four Seasons. So, the quiz question is, can you name and sing a couple of verses of the song that sold the most number of records out of all of their songs? So, call in, sing us a little tune of what you think is their number one hit record, okay? The second quiz question is, on October 21st, Pope Benedict XVI canonized two U.S. saints. Can you name them? Well, well I think, um, <laughs> and this is not the Jersey Boys. Um, you know, the, if you, the Jersey Boys are on Broadway. That's not Frankie Valley. This is actually the actual Frankie Valley. It's like uh, 106 now, and he's out <laughs> there singing. You know, it's very hard to sing Sherry Baby when you're 106. It's very years. exciting. Were they ever big in England or no? The Four Seasons? They were actually, but I think the uh, musicals made them much more popular. Hasn't yeah, it? yeah, yeah. Both, both in London and New York. Sort of like the Beach Boys, right? <laughs> they were like the Beach Boys and stuff. Who, who did, what was your favorite uh, Frankie Valley song? Big girls yeah. don't yeah. cry. That was a good song. Well, they need to call in. So the phone number is 718-499-6101. So we can hear your beautiful voices. Don't be shy. Call in. We want to hear you. So we're going to take a short break. Remember the phone number is 718-499-6101, and we're going to be talking to Dr. Cheatham and Dr. Abbott about urology, internal medicine, geriatric medicine, and lung disease. So good time to call in now. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Ask the Doctor. Before we get to the questions, I'd like to acknowledge Monsignor Bennett, who hasn't missed, a, missed actually one show in the entire 17 team. seasons. Thanks, Monsignor. It's great to see you here. And um, I want to shout out, actually, give a, I'll give my own shout out to Dr. Cheatham's parents. That's Muriel and Roy. That's right. Watching in England tonight. Tuning in from the UK. Yeah, it's good to see you guys, and uh, it's great to have your daughter on. Thanks. <laughs> it sounds like a great family. So now, tonight's topics, urology, internal medicine, geriatric disease, lung disease, the number is 718-499-6101. Also consider mailing your questions to ask the doctor at netny.net. Now let's meet the doctors. Dr. Abbott, let's start with you today. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Thank you very you, much. You had a happy event this past week. Yes, my son Stephen and daughter-in-law Nicoletta tied the knot ah. uh, this weekend, and my son Richard was there, and uh, we had a great time, along with... Uh, 150 other people. It's exciting. Like you, you, you work for that. It's parents' goal is to, to yeah. get the kids married. Then you feel like you've done your job. Right? Very, very happy event. Good job on that. Thank you. And what's going on in your in your life? Otherwise, anything? 
everything else is, is going wonderfully, trying to continue eating and exercising well. Very good. And we're going to go out to dinner, right? Soon. We're going to go out to dinner. Very good. But that won't be that healthy, I don't think. <laughs> no, no. But, but anyway, and Dr. Cheatham, and you're, you've had a busy uh, last few weeks. That's right. You're always busy, yeah. Well, September was Prostate Cancer Awareness Month, so we were out there educating the general public and telling them that there still is a role for PSA screening, yeah, yeah. despite what the uh, United States Preventative Task Force said, which confused a lot of patients as well as doctors about the advice to give patients for PSA screening. So do get your PSA We're checked. Still it's very confusing, but w why did they pick September? Is there something about September for prostate awareness or it was like it was used up the other months? Yeah, <laughs> you know, I think prostate cancer probably got in there before many of the other cancers, but September is the month and we try and educate people about what they can do to be proactive about oh. prostate health. Now you're also going to be operating this next week in the Bahamas. That's right. That's, That's amazing right, over there. So we have a procedure called HIFU, High Intensity Focused Ultrasound. Uh -huh. It's not yet FDA approved in the United States, but probably will be within the next 12 to 18 months. So we are fortunate to be able to treat patients offshore, and so I'll be doing some surgery both in the Bahamas and also what, it in burns Mexico. It burns it out or what happens? It's focused ultrasound. So I don't know if you ever tried to create a fire by focusing the beams of the sun on a piece of yes, paper yes, through a magnifying glass. Magnifi yes, yes, yes. It's the same it. principle as that, and it actually works very well at treating prostate cancer, and we can do that without doing an operation. So it's very Beautiful. exciting. And let me remind, you can catch at 7 a.m. on the radio, WABC. It's one of the biggest radio stations in the country. Right? That's right. We have a health talk radio show, Dr. Katz and myself, every Sunday live on WABC. That's Katz's Corner. So tune in and give us a call give if a you call. have a question yeah, yeah. about your prostate health. Very good. So, um, boy, we've got the phones blazing here. Yes. Uh, Kirsten, anybody that wants to talk to us? Actually, we have Grace on line one. Oh, Grace. Grace is always in a good mood. Let's see. Hey, Grace, how are you? Yeah. Hi, doctor. How are you? Okay, Grace. It's been you, a while. Yeah, you don't send that chipper tonight. What's going on? Yeah, no, I just had a shot, a needle in my uh, right knee. I need six, three in one knee and three in the other of Heiligen. Have uh -huh. you ever heard of Harrigan? Yeah, we've heard of that one. Yeah, they, they think that that's going to help because the soup parts did me nothing two years ago. Now, I got the shot. I didn't feel too much pain uh, of a needle, and I slept pretty good. But last night, I started to get a bad headache and queasiness of the stomach. So I took an Advil, and I slept pretty good, and the knee feels much better, of course. Grace, Grace, so what's the question tonight? Okay. Uh, uh, I called the company and they said, yes, there's side effects. The doctor said there's hardly any side effects. I just want to know, will that go away? I have like a migraine and queasiness of the stomach. All right, Grace. Uh, um, I took uh, Advil and... Uh, Grace, I, I only have two doctors here. <laughs> Let, let's see what they think about that, Dr. Thank Abbott. You. Hi, Grace. Um, sweetheart, uh, the injection probably is not causing your migraine. More likely, your headache is being caused by being anxious about the injection. Mm -hmm. um, where does it hurt on your head, sweetheart? Well, it even hurts my eyes. Yeah, yeah. You know what? Maybe try putting some ice on the back of your neck. Uh -huh. Okay, and relax with that. I um, find the Advil helps somewhat. Well, you should continue using the Advil. Uh, what other medication are you taking? Well, I take Xanax, Trivil, and thyroid medication for about 35 years. All right. So I would try the, the ice packs in the back of the neck. And, you know, if you want, you could also take a Tylenol with that to increase the, I, the analgesia, the getting rid of the pain. What about the queasiness there? It turns my, uh, my eating habits. Uh, I ate better tonight, but last, this morning I didn't feel like eating breakfast, but we had oatmeal. Usually I make French toast. Grace, Grace, Grace. Yeah. I'd love to hear about what you ate today. But we just we got to move on a little bit. Right, so, uh, what, is, what about the quiz? So what, what do I do? Maybe uh, they said I called the company up and they, they said uh, call your doctor, but he's not available until Monday. But uh, somebody was saying uh, give it uh, two or three days and the, the symptoms should go away. That and sounds they, like a good advice. G Grace, Grace, just try some Pepto Bismol. Melanthus does wonders to me. Excuse me. Melanthus is very good for me, for upset stomach. Yeah, but in this case, Pepto-Bismol would be better. 
Okay. So Grace, you have a qu you have a quiz answer? Oh, I wish I could. I love to sing. I sing at the senior center, but I don't know the song of June of uh, that Valley guy. Oh, Frankie Valley in the Four Seasons. Yeah, but can I try uh, the what's the other one about the um, the? <laughs> Okay, but let's uh, let's have Kirsten repeat it one time, quick. Yes, the uh, the second quiz question was on October twenty second. Pope Benedict the sixteenth canonized two U.S. saints. Can you name them? I was thinking, yeah. Well, I don't know. I'll try. Um, uh, uh, Mother Teresa. Okay. Who else? And maybe um, Francis Se Seaton. Okay. Is it is it Mother Teresa and Francis Seaton? Oh, okay. I had a feeling that might not be right. I, I think yeah. she thinks that you're one of the. I'm thinking maybe John, John Paul II. I think Pope John Paul II did those. But Grace, it's great. We haven't heard from you in a while. I'm glad that you're well. Do you like the new set? Yes, I, I'm getting used to it now. Yeah. <laughs> Takes a while. Yeah. Okay. So, so good luck and thank you for your patience and uh, I hope uh, I'll keep in touch with you. I'm supposed to go six weeks in a row. Uh, for these injections to do the whole series of them. Call us next week, okay? Thanks, All right, thanks. Thank you. Take care. Okay, that's Grace, and, um, and she always said come. You know, I did wonder if she was going to mention about having steroid injections into her oh. knee with the recent yeah. outbreak of fungal meningitis in the steroid. I heard you on this, I heard you on Fox <laughs> talking about that. What's the? Um, I mean, I guess it was a almost a, um, a criminal criminal neglect. That's right. Well, yeah. they're certainly investigating it. Yeah, have you, do you use that stuff, Mike? None of my patients, thank God, have had that problem. Yeah, that's a tragedy. That's a real bad. You need quality assurance, and if you don't have that, you know, you're going to run into problems, and there's got to, in this field, when you make a mistake, it's, it's, like, it's like with the airplanes. You make one mistake, that's you do right. a lot. Other, others you can get away with and it. And so often when there's problems, you know, you, you look back and you find that this problem has been around for many yeah. years. Yes. What do we have next? This is a... On line two, we have Larry from Rockland County. Oh, Larry. We haven't heard from Larry. Larry, we haven't heard from you in a while. How are you, Dr. Garner? How's everything? It's great to hear from you. Everything okay? <laughs> yes, I had gotten a new computer, and it took me uh, I don't know how long to try to uh, get the thing functioning. So, so uh, what do you think of the set? Uh, absolutely, uh, absolutely attractive. <laughs> it's, uh, it's a whole new image. Yes. I have a good-looking doctor, right? <laughs> yeah, the, the best. The yes. best. <laughs> I, I have a question for Dr. Cheatham, if I may guess. She's right here, ready okay. to go. Fire away, Larry. Uh, What's the question? Uh, all right. Is there a relationship between the size of the prostate being able to increase the PSA rating of the... Um, of your system? It's, it's a very good question and yes there is a correlation so the PSA comes out of the prostate gland so the bigger the prostate gland the more PSA you'll make and it's a very good point that you highlight because many people who go to the doctor and are found to have a elevated PSA they do not necessarily have prostate cancer and so the size of the gland is certainly relevant and sometimes we look at something called PSA density where we can take the patient's PSA reading and we can divide that by the volume of the prostate and that gives us a reading called, called PSA density that can also be very useful in assessing what the a actual PSA reading means. Is 145 grams a reasonably large uh, prostate? It certainly is, so anything above 30 grams would be considered enlarged. What we're really interested in though is not just what the size of the prostate is but whether the patient has symptoms. Do you have any problems with uh, going to the bathroom, getting up at night, poor no, flow? Just, I mean it's frequent urination. Maybe I, I could sleep uh, three or four hours at the best. And who told you that you had a prostate volume of 145 grams? I had seen a, a urologist and uh, that's what he, he uh, told me. Right. Well, we don't necessarily treat prostate size alone. We usually treat prostate issues related to symptoms. So there are medications that can shrink down the prostate. They do have side effects, and we would normally recommend those kind of medications for people that have symptoms related to an enlarged prostate. And we don't just shrink down 
a prostate if it's not causing any symptoms. Oh, and just quickly, you mentioned the, uh, um, the antioxidants. Uh, if you have, um, can you get your antioxidants from other than um, green tea? You certainly can. So green tea is very rich in antioxidants, but fresh fruit and vegetables are the most important natural antioxidants that you can get. So certainly for prostate health, we would recommend that you take plenty of the green leafy vegetables, the broccoli, kale, spinach. That's excellent. And men always like it when we say that red wine, Pinot Noir in particular, is very rich in resveratrol, which is an antioxidant that's good for your prostate health. So we support a glass of red wine for prostate health. Splendid. And I'll toast that wine to... Uh the entire organization there. <laughs> Thank you very call. much. I appreciate that. Thank Thanks, you. Thanks, Ari. Good to hear from you. You're very My pleasure, doctor. Thank you. Who do we have next? Kirsten? All right. We have Michael from Bensonhurst on line three. Hey, Michael. How are you? Hi, Doc. Uh, how are you? Well, what's going on in Bensonhurst tonight? Oh, just relaxing, and, you know. It's, it's uh, I'm sort of the end of this. You know, you feel that cold weather coming on yeah, now? Yeah, a lot of leaves flying all over the joint. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So um, what, yes. what can we do for you tonight? Oh, uh, one question is that when I answered the, the first, uh, I gave the right answer, I never received my plaque when the, uh, what was This the is first? a frequent complaint. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. When well, the bishop. Well, I remember that. I remember exactly. Yeah. And you're going to get it. So if you just. Oh, if I you emailed could, you. You emailed me? Yes, I did. I'm going to have that department, the gift department, work on yeah, that. Yeah, thank right. you so much. Okay. Any questions? Okay. The question is of... Uh, about the spinal meningitis, because uh, about 21 years ago, I think I received uh, three epidurals, uh -huh. and I like to know if it's okay to try to get another, if they set me up for another set. Okay, and what were the epidurals for? Uh, lower back injury. Okay. Um, yeah. well, Mike, you want to start, and then we'll... Yeah. Sure, sure. Um, yeah, 21 years ago... Um, it's certainly okay to, if, you're, if it's recommended by your physician, to, to get uh, injections again uh, for your disc problem. Um, and I would not be concerned about having uh, any uh, infection in this batch. It's probably the safest batch you'll ever have. Okay. Kirsten, I mean, um, Philippa, yeah. what are the give four signs people should be looking out for? If they, they think they have meningitis, what might be the f four quick signs they would think of? Typical signs of meningitis would be headache, fever, stiff neck, um, a photophobia where bright lights bother you. The problem with this meningitis, it was a fungal meningitis, which didn't necessarily present with the classical symptoms. Mm -hmm. So even if you had a flu-like illness or you didn't feel well, if you just had a fever and no neck stiffness, then you should still discuss that with your doctor because these symptoms were much more vague than the typical bacterial meningitis. And yeah. fungal meningitis uh, is rapidly fatal. Yes, can be. You. you know what, and, and uh, is this something we'd worry more for the elderly and the young or is this going to hit any age? Well, the problem with this particular outbreak was that the contaminated vials were injected directly into the spinal yeah. cord. So anybody that received those injections were, were at risk. But it's not contagious. So if anybody had had this particular type of fungal meningitis, nobody else was at risk of developing the condition. All right. Mike, yeah. hope that helps you yeah. out. We'll get, that, yeah, we'll that, get, you, we'll that. get the plaque onto you okay. real soon. All right. Uh, you want to take a stab at tonight's quiz? Uh, Frankie Valley. Uh, Okay, I, I, somehow the, I want to hear this voice singing Frankie Valley. <laughs> Nate, oh wait, uh, how about if I guess what it is first, or you want yeah, me to what sing? what was their greatest hit, and then give us a couple of verses well, from it. Well, I was thinking, being that this is a holy station, swear to God. Oh, it's a good good one, good one. How did, you're going to just sing Let's us one verse? I swear to God. Swear to God. That's what it does. I forgot the word. That was nice, though. Oh, you got good me shocked, I'm sorry. No, that was good. You got the main words in this. Yeah, the swear yeah. to God. You got swear Kirsten dancing a little bit. It was good. Yeah. Is it? Is it swear to God? Oh, oh. <laughs> wow. what a, but it was a good. We're gonna make. Wow. We're gonna send yours out special. All right. Thank okay. You. Thank you so much. <laughs> Take care, Mike. Yes. You know, people. Yeah. God you know, bless us all. Be well. Thank you. You won the contest, you know, it's not, it's not right. We gotta, we'll, we'll work on that, though. Yeah. You know, I, was, I came back from Richmond today. I was on a plane. I, I, some plane trivia. We, you know, the only place you can still smoke on a plane is a cockpit. 
The huh. pilots are allowed to smoke because they don't want the guy to get in a fit in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. So that's an interesting tidbit. Really? That's yeah. That. Nobody. And the water where you go to um, in the bathroom to wash your hands, that's not drinkable. That's oh. not sterile water. That's just to wash your hands, but there's, there's bacteria in that. So oh. you just want to stay away from that. Was your pilot smoking? He was, was smoking. <laughs> I don't know what's going on in that cockpit. <laughs> you know? But it's one of these little planes. And also you can get this economy class syndrome that's now been redistributed into, you get it in a business class too. It has to do with the change in, in air pressure. Do you know that the airplane only corrects to 10,000 feet altitude? Right, so right. when you go up, it's like being at 10,000 feet. You get a little short of breath. So if you're on oxygen, you may need some help. What, what he didn't tell you was that he was on his private jet where he, there are no rules. <laughs> <laughs> Is that right, Steve? Yes, yes. That, oh, this morning. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I, 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 okay, I'll talk about that again. <laughs> but... Um, no, so any, any more tidbits on that? Uh, I'll give you an, another one, okay? Yeah, well, actually the right now. The air is recirculated in the cabin 50%, 50, um, 50 but up class uh, in the captain, 95% resaturated and recirculated, oh, wow. so, which is also makes sense, but it keeps you more alert as you're thinking. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Cleaner air. So anyway, some tidbits on flying. That's okay. great. I wish I had known that before my honeymoon where I did wash my hands in that bacteria water. But you didn't drink it. I hope not. No, no. I hate when somebody's <laughs> putting us down to drink. You so know that's so gross. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, line four. Yes. We have Diane, and she's from Bergen Beach. Oh, beautiful neighborhood out there. Hi, Diane. Hello, doctor. How are you this evening? Great. How, tell us a little bit about Bergen Beach. Oh, Bergen Beach. I love it. The most beautiful part of Brooklyn. It is beautiful. You got a little beach there? No, actually, See, you don't. No beach in Bergen Beach. <laughs> a little history understood. about Bergen Beach. It used to be an island off Canarsie. Uh, so I understand. No, it, I, it did, it did. And there's, there's a beautiful nightclub out there. There's a yacht club. Oh, yeah, they have a little, the, um, now I can't think of the name of it offhand, but that's where we hold our uh, civic meetings, and they have all kinds of functions there. Yeah, I think it's the Bergen Beach Yacht you, Club. Doctor, I have to ask you, why would you wash your hands with bacterial water? Good question, yeah. It just really I would not wash my hands for, on any plane ever, ever again. Yeah, if we meet on the plane, remind me not to shake hands. But, uh, hand sanitizer. <laughs> but if you take the soap and rub it like that, it's a lot of it's the friction and the heat that kills a lot of these germs, too. Oh, but all right. So I, I have to wash my hands like I'm going to set them on fire. No, but you, yeah, bring some Purell. It's probably the best idea. If they let you on the airplane on the, yeah, the with that. Yeah. But anyway, doctor, I have a question for the urologist. Yes, she's right here. I'm a woman of 60-some odd years, and... As of the last six months or so, I want to know if this is a common uh, uh, problem for women my age where we urinate, and it, I urinate very slowly. And it's annoying because it takes me a little too long to eliminate. There, there is a condition called urethral stenosis, and that's when the urethra, the tube that goes from the bladder, to the outside is narrowed and it certainly can cause these problems of difficulty emptying and if the urine doesn't drain away Diane it can cause urinary tract infections if we have a patient like you who complains of difficulty emptying and they have to strain to empty their bladder your doctor can first of all do a test called a flow rate where they can actually assess what your stream is like and do a scan of the bladder to see how well you are emptying your bladder. Have you had any problems with urinary tract infections at all? Not at all. No, okay. Well, if this is a problem and you're not emptying your bladder and the flow rate that your urologist can do shows that the bladder, the flow rate is reduced, then it, there is a very simple procedure that can be done in the office actually to dilate up the urethra, open up the urethra to improve uh, the, f the drainage of urine and, and your stream. So I would certainly go and discuss that with your urologist. Well, thank you so much, doctor. But I would like to know, is it a common occurrence in women my age? It, it is quite a common problem, actually. And many patients don't actually realize that anything can be done about it. And often, it's probably more common than we actually realize, because not everybody goes to the doctor, so, but it's certainly something that we do see very frequently in the office. We want to thank you for the call. You thank want to take you. a stab at the quiz? Uh, yes. My oh. eyes adored you. 
Okay, now you just sing a couple of verses. Well, um, let me see now. How, well, how, what kind of... Uh, you can uh, sing it in, like, My Eyes Adored You. <laughs> let's do a duet, Doctor. Well, let's, let's hear it first. <laughs> All right. My eyes adored you. Ooh, nice. Though I never laid a hand on you, my eyes adored you. Do you like that? I like that a lot. I like that a lot. I enjoy your show so much, Doctor. I try not to miss it. Uh, it's very entertaining and informative. And good luck, and thank you all. Thank you very much. Well, let's see if, well, let's see if that was the correct answer, by the way. Was oh, it? what do I win? Well, well I, we no, no, know. no, let's see. we got to see now. Oh, I thought I, I thought I won. No, we invested in this. Oh. oh, what a letdown. What a terrible I'm sorry. letdown. I'm sorry. <laughs> but you sounded great. <laughs> thank you, you doctor. Bye-bye. <laughs> Take care. It's good. we got a fan out there. I like <laughs> that. Over I there. hope Simon Cowell's watching. <laughs> <laughs> but we're going to do is we're going to take a short break. And when we come back, we're going to be taking your calls at 718-499-6101, where our topics are urology, internal medicine, geriatric medicine, lung disease. I want to get into geriatric medicine with you a little bit. And the quiz, don't forget, the, the number one question was the greatest hit single, the most sell, the mo sold the most records, the Frankie Valley and the Four Seasons. Can you name it? And you've got to sing two verses to win it. And the second quiz was the most recently canonized U.S. Catholic Saints. Can you name the two? And that's it. Good questions. We'll be right back. Don't go far. And welcome back to Ask the Doctor, where our topics are urology, internal medicine, geriatric medicine, lung disease. We have Dr. Philip Cheatham and Dr. Michael Abbott. Call us at 718-499-6101. You may get a busy signal. Keep trying. Okay, let's get to back to our busy phones here. Absolutely. So on line one, we have Linda from Staten Island. Hi, Linda. Hi. How are you tonight? I'm fine. How are you? Good. Is this the first time you called? Excuse me? Is this the first time you called? Yes. I know. I, I hear it. I hear it. Um, <laughs> what did you, did you have? Any, what do you think of the quiz? Um, I, on October 21st, um, the Pope canonized Kateri Pekaglisa and Mother Mary Ann Cope. Oh, let's send that back to the judges. Let's is see if it's is right. that the correct answer? Whoa! <laughs> that is amazing. I got, I got it. How did it's, you know that? People are speechless here. I'm, I'm speechless. I don't. I go to St. Anne's Church in Staten Island, so I'm well versed in this. Who, who's the priest at that church? Father. The pastor is. Well, there's a few priests there, but the pastor is Father Joy Manfieli. Ah, did a good job. Very good job. Thank good. you. You're an A Great plus job. student. Oh. Linda, don't Thank forget you. to send us all of your information at askthedoctor at netny.net. And for the rest of you, email us or call us for the answer to the other quiz question. Now, can I we help you with the medical answer. issue? No, but I might have the answer to the other one. No, no, no. We take only because um, we're yeah. trying to spread the wealth here. One plaque oh, per okay. show, Linda. Okay. <laughs> Feel well. Thank you, and I love your show. Thanks a lot, Linda. That's good. What were the names again? St. Kateri Tekawitha, who was the first Native American saint, wow. and St. Mother Marianne Cope. Did you know that either? No, I didn't. Uh, that, very impressive. Tekawitha. Say it one more time. Tekawitha. <laughs> okay, it's great, it's great. <laughs> okay. All um, right, so on line two, we have Patrick from Park Slope. Oh, one of our favorite callers. Hi, Patrick. Hey, Dr. Garner, how you doing? How you feeling? I'm doing okay, Dr. Garner. It's a little tough time of the year for me. Always at this time of year, Patrick me. gets almost like panic attacks. Yeah, call, right? it's bad. It's uh, very uh, terrible. Mike, what do you think? Why at one time of the year would he only, he only gets it around now, September, October? It could be something that reminds him of uh, some previous trauma. It could be the time of year. It could be with relation to holidays, people coming over, maybe the fall, and you know problems with the winter coming. Mm. You, you know what, Doc? You know what's funny about that? It's glad you said that. My dad died in 1980 on uh, September 26th, oh. and I had I had found him. You know, he had the heart attack, and I found him. And you know, since then, I, maybe that's it. I, I don't know. So what are you, what are you doing about your panic attacks? I'm um, take I take Zoloft 150 milligrams, and um, you know, that's really about it. 
Are you, are you doing any exercise? No, that's the big problem I have. I'm, I'm kind of overweight, and I'm just having a hard time losing weight. Well, ex exercise would certainly help, obviously, with the weight loss and certainly with the panic attacks. Mm. Many right. people who exercise say that it's a fantastic stress right. reliever and it's, there's a lot of evidence to support that. Have you ever yeah. thought about trying acupuncture for your panic attacks? No, no, that sounds very interesting. That might be worth looking into, particularly just to try it this time of year and see if it helps you. Right, right, I should do something. And it seems like, like I told Dr. Garner in the past, the acid comes, even when I walk, my acid comes up into my chest and it's like, it's terrible, and it starts, it starts off a panic attack. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. you, you keep calling us, my, okay, Pat? Wait, wait, what about the quiz, Doc? No, hey, I'm, doc, I'm getting ready for this. I'm, I'm segueing into another quiz section here. Oh, okay, Doc. Why, why don't you have Dr. Aslam Khan on? He's a great doctor over in the Met Methodist. Okay, what's his last name? Aslam, Aslam Khan. Aslam. Do you know him? He works with us, sure. I got Dr. Rabbit. He works with Dr. Rabbit. We're going to get him on. I'm going to get Dr. Rabbit to do the booking, okay? He's a great guy. Let me tell you, what a man. We're going to get him on. Okay. Um, let me see if I can win this quiz. I'm going to go with Sherry. Okay, but you, you know the requirement. Yeah. Sherry, Sherry, baby, Sherry, Sherry, baby, Sherry. All right, it's enough. Oh, I was looking forward to the high note. Very nice, very That's nice. Very is, it, is it Sherry, baby? Oh, Patrick, oh boy. Patrick. I'm but shocked at that, Pat. Doc, they, oh, by the way, Doc, the ratings came out from last week. You beat out Dancing with the Stars by two points. Oh, well, <laughs> thanks, Pat. <laughs> Patrick's doing a whole stick now. It's good. It's good. Get your <laughs> mind off the thing. You Take see, care, Doc. singing has a therapeutic value. You, you sound happier already. Thank you, sweetie. Patrick, Thank what, do you think of the new, week. what do you think of the new set? I like it a lot. I like it a lot. Plus, you got some, some real good doctors on. <laughs> Only the best. Thanks, Doc. Be well. To you, too. Thanks. I once ran into Patrick, I was on the BQE, somebody's honking me, so I'm looking down because they're going to get shot, and somebody comes, starts banging on the window, he gets out of the car, the BQ, <laughs> things are, tries to go on like 80 miles an hour, <laughs> banging, and he says, Dr. Gunn, it's Patrick, it's Patrick. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Lucky I bought a change underwear that day. <laughs> <laughs> okay, who's next? Uh, line four, we have Henry from Manhattan. Hey, Henry, how are you? Hello. Henry, yes. you're calling us from Manhattan, what part? Yes. Which part what? of Manhattan, Henry? I'm in uh, Chelsea right now, Doctor. Uh -oh. Have we spoken before? No, but you probably have heard of me. Uh, I'm good friends with another friend of yours, Joe Styles. Oh, yes, yes, yes. And Joe you Stiles. also did a wonderful thing for my mom in Methodist Hospital. You visited her, and oh. uh, it made a world of difference. It, it, I think you did more for her than Dr. Vadim, who operated on her. But uh, God bless you all at Methodist. Well, it's and, nice of you to uh, call and say I, that. I just wanted to ask you, uh, with blood pressure now, I found, unfortunately, that my blood pressure is really up and down. But the uh, potassium magnesium seems to keep it regular. Is, is there a reason why that works more than, like, you know, the other drugs? I mean, it's like the habit to start off. Yeah, well, you know, potassium and magnesium can help blood pressure. But if your blood pressure is high, are you taking any medication for that? Well, I used to take... Um, uh, what was that called? The uh, give me the name. It's a very pill? popular. Which, no, it wasn't a water pill. The um, uh, come on, help me. The uh, it's all right. So it's it's okay. Beta blocker. No, um, it's very common. A lot of people take it, but it, it didn't it, it didn't help me. And then uh, it, it dawned on me that I stopped taking potassium magnesium a while back. And when I stopped taking it, the blood pressure went up. And now I started taking the potassium again with the magnesium, and it's back to normal. What's, so, your, what's your blood pressure now? About 120 over 80. Okay. And uh, just make sure you don't eat a lot of salt, pizza, yes. Chinese food. Takeout food's very, very bad for high blood but pressure. But I, I got a dear friend who's, who's the best Chinese restaurant in Brooklyn on Avenue X. I can't do that. What's the name of that? I got to see her at least once in a month, once a month. <laughs> what is the name of that restaurant? That's uh, Hunan Cottage. Okay, Hunan Cottage. You could stick with the yeah, green chicken it's, and vegetables. Well, the food is just like any other Chinese restaurant, but the Judy is really, I don't call it Hunan Cottage, I call it Judy's because <laughs> she makes the place what it is. So make, so make sure Judy... Go eat it and, and it doesn't bother me, the Chinese food. Make sure Judy... 
leaves out the salt and the <laughs> MSG and the soy sauce, please. Well, she does do that, but I add the soy sauce. She leaves out the MSG. <laughs> There's a place that's no longer there, Joy Fung. Anybody remember that place? Oh, yeah. Avenue J, <laughs> beautiful place, gone yeah. though, many years. Now, I have the answer to the quiz, but I'm not going to sing it. Oh, no, no, Oh, you no. have to you sing got, it. You can sing two verses. No, no, I get paid a lot of money not to sing Okay, <laughs> what, what do you think it is? It's uh, Oh, What a Night. If he could only sing one song, one verse, maybe we could find out. Yeah, let's just hear uh, one verse, you know, please. I, I, I'll start also you off. I'm the same Henry Bosso as the prayer group for Padre Pio. <laughs> I'll Padre start you Pio off. Padre Pio be very upset with me. Oh, what a night. Late December back in 63. What happened then? I was three years old. I didn't do anything. I didn't <laughs> okay. What can I do? In, you know, I don't even remember what ate that day, but nevertheless. You know, he tried. It was Christmas time. i got to give him something for trying. We should see. Is it, oh, what a night, late September back in 63? Whoa! I thought that was amazing. I'm surprised. I, did, did that would be the number one song? I'm surprised. Would it all walk like a man or... Or one of the my eyes adored let's you. hang on my eyes adored mm. you let's hang on <laughs> and this song yeah. well, you know why it was part of a movie it was it was in a couple of movies oh. I forget yeah. the second what was the second movie just uh, Forrest Gump or something or no it was in two movies this song I don't know but we have to remind Henry to email all of your information to ask the doctor at net ny.net so we can send you your prize okay Henry yes no, okay. your mind is wandering. How you watch the show again? No, you'll I, see I, the email. I, I, have the, I have the television, Mo. I can't hear you. How did you know that, by the way? Oh, uh, I, I've been around a while. I, even though I was very young then, but I'm 52 now. That's not that old. You That's did a good job. Nah. You did a but really I, I, good job. I was a distracted for during my college days and all that good stuff. What's going on and, with the Chelsea Hotel? Oh, it's right here, right down the block from me. Are they redoing I'm, right that? Now I'm, I'm at Silas Manor on uh, 23rd Street. You ever going to uh, the Chelsea Hotel? No, I haven't. What a touch it. beautiful. A lot of famous. Who, who used to write there? Famous writers oh, used to live there. I don't remember that. All right, Henry, we're going to move on, but we're, great, great job on the quiz. Oh, God bless you, Doctor. And again, thanks for visiting my mom, and keep up the great work you're doing. Tell her hello from us, okay? All right, and if you talk to Joe Styles, give him my best. Okay, thanks a lot. God bless Thank you. you. We're going to take a little short break, and when we come back, we're going to get back to your questions. Now, the topics are urology, internal medicine, geriatric medicine, and lung disease. You can email your questions to askthedoctor at netny.net. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Ask the Doctor, where our topics are urology, internal medicine, geriatric medicine, and lung disease. We're going to go right to the questions. We have these busy... Do we have a, someone to talk to? Oh, person? yeah. We have, right now, we have Joe on line three. He's from Manhattan. Hey, Joe. How are you? Joe. Uh, I've had better days. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. What's going on? Well, uh, recently, I was diagnosed with uh, lesions in the brain. Okay. <laughs> And uh, they put me on this medication, what and it's they? for anti-seizures. Okay. How old are you, Joe? So, I would like, uh, I'm 70. Okay. What's your and question? I, I'd like to know uh, what, what's the, what's, what can happen uh, down the road. It, okay. Did they say, did they say where this? these lesions were coming from? No, he, he just showed me the x-ray and he said that there were lesions. Okay, Dr. Cheatham, what do you think about that? Well, I think we certainly need more information about what these lesions are. Have you had a CAT scan? Did you have yes, the they gave me a, a cat, uh, MRI. Uh, uh, and who organized that? Was that done by a neurologist or your local doctor? Yes, by a neurologist. And he told me I had uh, lesions in, in my in the right side of my face because I was feeling tinglish for a couple of months. And did he give you a diagnosis? He, that was the diagnosis that I had lesions. Right. Well, it's, it's and he put me on this medication. Right. Well, it it sounds like you need to go back to your doctor and ask him to explain a little bit more about the condition that you've been diagnosed with. What's the medication? What's the name of the medication? Uh, it, okay, hold on. 
It's, well, Joe, I can spell it for you. It's easier to spell than it spell is pronounced for me. Spell it. Okay. It's O X C A R P I Z E N. Okay, so some kind of anti seizure medication. Yeah. Um, Michael, yeah. what do you. I guess we've got to know where it's coming from. If it's primary to the brain, is it a structural? Well, usually, usually if there's more than one lesion, it's coming from someplace else. And I think the most important thing is to get an explanation of what's causing the lesions, where they're coming from, and if you don't feel comfortable going yourself, bring a family member. You know what, if you want to have, Mike, maybe you can, because we're, we're, we're rushing through these questions now, and I don't want to no, do misjustice to this along. question. No, uh -oh. but I, d I definitely want to help you out here. So. You have the number for, um, for Dr. Abbott, and maybe, or you can call me at the office and I'll get you a referral to get a second opinion and get to the bottom of what's going on. All right? Okay. We have to know uh, what's it causing it. It could, be, it could be anything from tumor from somewhere else. It could be a primary brain tumor. It could be vascular tumors in the brain. So we need to find out. I think Dr. Cheatham, anything else you could think and of? And I would certainly ask for, well, a co ask for a copy of your report, the CT report, and then you can take it with you to your doctor to get a second opinion and he can explain that to you if you're not comfortable with the doctor you're with or just ask your doctor to explain the report to you and ask for the diagnosis. Did you have one last to question. Explain that to you. Did he order any other tests for you? Uh, no, he just ordered that because uh, he said I was having mini seizures. Okay. Let's talk next week, okay? And you can call either my office or Dr. Abbott's office during the sooner. Okay. Okay, okay Joe. I'll call this phone number, right? Correct. Feel okay, better. thanks. Bye. We have an email? I'm trying. We That's do, a tough one do. because um, you feel, I feel bad for Joe. He's been given, um, you, you don't know what he has. We just know he's got multiple lesions. Sure, there I think the best advice for him is to go back and tell his doctor, I don't understand what's wrong with me. I don't understand what the diagnosis is. I don't understand what my scan yeah. shows. Can you explain it to me? It's yeah. very early. It's, it's very early in the uh, diagnostic phase. It's just get presented with seizures and tingling. That's all. Sorry. What do you What do you have, Kirsten? Well, we have Nancy with an email, and she says my elderly <laughs> friend is home with pneumonia and is having trouble breathing. Will oxygen help her to breathe and recover sooner? Michael. Well. I think that's an important question, uh, the Ask use of oxygen okay. with somebody. Just because you're short of breath doesn't you mean, you, mean you need oxygen. But if you have pneumonia and you're short of breath, okay. you may have to go to the help? hospital. It's not something to be taken lightly. And oxygen without a physician looking at you can be a dangerous thing. So it's very important not only to get oxygen, but to have a physician take a look at you and make sure it's okay to be at home instead of being in the hospital. Okay, good good job on that one. Let's go back to the phones. Yeah, good idea, because right now we have Nick on line two, and he's from Richmond Hill. Hey, Nick, how are you? I'm uh, fine, doctor, how are you? Nick, where's Richmond Hill? Excuse me? Where is Richmond Hill? It's uh, right in between Jamaica and uh, Woodhaven, oh, okay. in Queens. Very nice, very nice. Uh, you've called us before, right? Uh, no, this is the first time. Okay, what can I do for you? Yes, doctor. A few years ago, I was diagnosed with uh, nephritic syndrome of the kidneys. And I had asked the doctor, I said, well, what causes it? He said it, it could come from a virus. But uh, his uh, physician's assistant told me that it could be caused by a urinary tract infection. Could you please, you know, help me out with this? What causes it? And could that be from a urinary tract infection? Sure. It, it's not usually caused by a urinary tract infection. Uh, nephrotic syndrome can have many different causes. And the key with nephrotic syndrome is that it makes the membrane of the kidney becomes very leaky. And so proteins can leak out. And it's very important that you are followed closely by a nephrologist on a regular basis. Are you under a nephrologist at the moment? Um. As of now, uh, I'm not with the nephrologist anymore. I'm with my regular, my regular physician. But I was on steroids for about um, four or five months. For, and for the condition? For, for the condition. And I had a biopsy, uh, an, another biopsy, and everything seems to be clear. So I go for blood tests every three months. And uh, 
they check my urine and everything every three months, and everything seems to be good. Sure. So with the urine test, they're measuring the amount of protein in the urine. But with this condition, I would strongly advise that you see a nephrologist regularly so that they can make sure that the condition does stay in remission and that you do not require any further treatment. Thanks for the call. We're going to move along. I thank you very much. Be well. Okay, we're going to do a rapid-fire segment here. Who's next? Great, we got Madeline on line one from Flushing. Hi, Madeline. How are you? Yeah. Madeline? Yeah, hi. How are you? How are you, doctor? Who's in the background? Yes. Oh, try and turn that TV down, all right? Yeah. Okay, take a second and turn it down. Phone to my ear and... Okay. Okay. Let me ask you a question. It's one of down. our viewers has a yeah. PSA. Can you hear me? Okay, we're going to come back to that. Can you hear me? I hear you, Madeline. What's up? Okay, this, um, I live in Flushing. I live in Flushing. Yes. And also, um, I'm type 2 diabetic. Okay. And I've also been told that I have a blood vessel disease in my, in, on the right side of my brain. I've had the CAT scan and, or in the MRI over the last few years, and they say that it's, they, they tell me it's nothing to worry about, that it comes with age. It's like an arterial type thing from okay. the arteries. In the brain. Just microvascular disease. That's, yeah, exactly. Yes. And I have type 2, um, I'm type 2 diabetic. And I tend to urinate more than I've ever urinated. I wanted to know, you know, what, what, what can I do? And, and I'm, I'm on several medications. Okay, quick answer. Okay, a couple of things. It may be something very simple like a urine infection. So a urine culture to exclude infection. Also, the bladder has a nerve supply that is affected by diabetes so the frequency of going to the bathroom may be related to the diabetes itself in the absence of infection so go to your urologist but first of all get a urine culture to make sure there's no urine infection. Mike? I think very important statistically even more often would be high blood sugars and you have to watch out and make sure that your sugars are well controlled mm -hmm. make sure your cholesterol is well controlled if you have diabetes which would help prevent microvascular disease as well as uh, a lot of urination. Okay, so you're talking about the sugar intake. Well, I do try to monitor what I eat. Every, well, you know, I've changed my, my eating habits over the past five years. Well, you just, but what's your sugar running? My sugar, my last reading was 6.7. The glycohemoglobin, that's very good. Yeah, I go every three months to my doctor and she take, they take blood and everything. That's very good. I gotta run, I gotta run, but um, I hope that helps you. Yeah, um, can I get in the quiz? Oh, we well, got the answer. What was going to be your? What, let me just hear though. What could have been? Uh, the quiz with the with the four seasons. Yeah, what do you think it is? Um, I love you, baby, and if it's quite all right, I need you, baby, to fill my lonely nights. Let me love you, baby. <laughs> Let me love you. Beautiful, wow. beautiful. Wow. I have to give it. That wasn't it. I don't think, no. But it was a great song. It was a great <laughs> rendition. Great I enjoyed answer. it very much. Yes. Okay. Thank you for that. Okay, thank you. Okay, we've got to wrap up here, but uh, let me just ask you a quick question, because we have viewers out there. I'm, I'm 78 years old, and my PSA is 24. I go to see Dr. Abbott. Should, he, should Dr. Abbott send uh, the patient to Dr. Cheatham? Definitely. One up? What do you think? Excellent. Yeah? Even though the even though um, well, all the st absolutely, Steve, and seventy four is by no means old, and that's definitely a patient that we would want to see and evaluate properly in the office as so, soon as possible. So there's no time. You should really keep up with your prostate health, no matter how old sure, you are. Sure. I mean, the most useful thing to do in the beginning is probably just to repeat the PSA uh -huh. and check that it is a real reading. But certainly, an elevated PSA of twenty four requires Excellent. investigating. Okay, we only paid till 9 o'clock, so i got to move on here. <laughs> but I want to thank um, Kirsten for being here and helping us out again, Dr. Philip Achidam and Dr. Michael Abbott for coming in. We hope we've been able to help you. It's good to remember that you should always be proactive about your health. Speak to your doctors about your concerns. Go for second or third opinions. Visit our website at netny.net slash doctor. Here you can review my weekly tablet column, you can watch past episodes, and you can email your questions for the next show. Now, for next week, we're going to discuss heart disease with a special demonstration. But you don't want to miss this. And internal medicine. Now, also, tune in tonight at 9 o'clock for the encore presentation of last week's show. We had a great show last week. You know, I can't even believe it. i got to watch it again to make sure it was so good. And um, goodbye. Stay healthy.
and the audience show was great. We really appreciated that at the Virgin Mary Church. If anybody wants, a, wants us to come out there, call us. See you in the tablet. Thank you.